Well, folks, I've listened to your advice and I'm going to take the Surly to Africa. Um, you've said that it's a more robust bike and there's more chance of me getting parts and there's more room if I take panniers to uh, stock up on food and water and all that sort of thing. So in this video, I'm going to show you my final setup for the journey. So this is the setup I'm planning on taking. I've got most things on the bike apart from extra water and uh, my fuel bottle. So I've got the two panniers. These are my two trusty old Crosso panniers, which I've toured with before on this bike. And as you can see, I've added some straps to the rack here, and that's where I'm planning to put extra water. I've got my Brooks saddle on here. I've got um, a Dynamo front wheel with two bottle cages, kind of anything style cages. So I've tested this with two litre bottles in so I've got I can carry four litres of water just on the front fork and then another four on the rear rack. Up front I've got um, an Apidura handlebar bag. If you watched the other video where I was experimenting with taking the road bike you saw that I had to run that <laughs> kind of in the straight out front front facing sausage type position whereas I can with these bars with this setup I can just take it as it's supposed to be, so kind of in the cross mount position, which I must say does handle a little better than it did the other way around. So um, in the kind of cockpit area here, I've got um, basically some outkit bags, a nice big handlebar bag, um, and two of their fuel pod type bags, um, in which I can get quite a lot of food and just kind of things I need to access along the way. Um, and my trusty Topeak um, top loader, whatever you call it, top tube bag, not top tube bag, frame bag. And um, that's about it. And with that setup, I can get plenty of food in because the panniers are really not particularly loaded up at all. Um, I've kind of just stuffed all my things inside so they look fuller than they actually will be um, if I pack properly. And so it just feels a lot more peaceful, <laughs> a lot more, um, I've got much less trepidation, I guess, about taking this bike because it's practically bomb proof. If you've watched videos on this channel before, um, you'll see the sorts of things I've done with it and it's just withstood everything I've ever put it through. And so I did have that dream of taking the road bike and because it was a steel frame road bike and everything else and lightweight and rah, 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 but I think common sense, and also thinking deeply and doing some testing as well. Like when I was testing with the road bike, um, it was definitely going to be a bit tight for extra food and water. And if that frame did break, well, it's a higher grade of steel. And so it would have been a bit harder to weld somewhere than this kind of more old school style metal. So that's it. That's the setup. I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, Scott in particular, you'll be pleased that I'm taking this bike. And um, yeah, I hope to be in communication with you guys again soon. Let me know your thoughts on the Surly, the Surly resurrected for Africa. Mountain bike gearing on this bike. So it's a 32, I think, nine speed at the rear with a triple crank set and like a, a 22 or something, a little granny ring on the front. So pretty much spin up anything. Another thing as well, just testing out on the kind of pretty wintry Welsh roads at the moment and um, the mud guards are definitely a welcome reprieve from the weather. Tyres wise I've got some Schwalbe Marathon Supremes on here so they roll a bit faster than the kind of standard Marathon or Marathon Pluses but 26 inch wheels so they will roll a bit slower overall and that was another big reason why I was wanting desperately <laughs> to take my lightweight steel frame road bike but hey ho! <laughs> Let me know your thoughts, comments, and criticisms on this setup, and I'll see you again soon.